Okay, hi boys and girls. Um, I'm back uh, for a quick, uh, a quick news brief, I guess. Um, I, I got this um, presented to me a, a little bit ago, and um, and it says um, uh, this is from the Washington Post, and it's from um, uh, George Will. Uh, now, I know uh, folks uh, folks get all upset when I start talking about politics. He is definitely a heavy-duty Republican, um, and um, he has a, a little note here that says two-thirds of new cars will be EVs in nine years with a question mark, and then the answer is no, that will not happen. Okay, well, you know, I read through this, and um, and this looks kind of like um, uh, about as negative as you can get, and, and quite frankly, I don't really understand why it is that every time I read one of these columns or something that's in the news, it always seems to smack of the same thing. It's, it's always EVs have to do with politics. Um, it hasn't got anything to do with that. It's, uh, it's kind of like we're moving in a new direction and everybody that kind of makes predictions that, uh, that are nine years out, I'm going to be probably not even alive in nine years. I, I find it hard to believe that you can throw this crap out and, and expect everybody to be happy about it. And so I, I just like to, you know, temper this a little bit. I believe that, um, I believe that uh, electric vehicles will be coming along here real soon. And the infrastructure ideas and whatnot, I'd like you to go and look up when the first gas station chain appeared. Hmm. Cars came out in about 1900, gas stations started showing up in 1913. Up till that point in time, most people would use something that they'd buy from the pharmacy, uh, like usually raw alcohol or something like that. I, I think that uh, this crap about, oh, we won't have the infrastructure ready, I think with the Ford news, the, that's been the best news so far this year. Ford and Tesla um, sharing the Tesla charging system, which is, without a question of a doubt, the best system on the planet. I mean, nobody's got anything even close to it. Just ask anybody who's had to drive uh, both types of vehicle, Tesla and everybody else. That charging system that was invented a long time ago uh, really and truly can't compare with the North American charging system that that Tesla's got. Um, I will tell you, most of the problems associated with that thing is a connector. The second thing that came out this last couple of days kind of also um, made me, uh, gave me uh, uh, the chance to pause and think about this a little bit. And that would be that uh, the little news about, um, about um, uh, Mary Barra uh, making a comment about, uh, about um, Tesla. Well, the, the news is that Tesla Model Y is now the biggest selling vehicle in, um, in the world, uh, taking over from Toyota. That's big news. And, and with Mary Barra coming along saying that nothing is going to be profitable until 2030, that's another one of these things that looks a long ways out, but it does show something. Um, when I'm trying to turn a company around, and that's kind of like one of the things that I do for a living. When I'm trying to turn a company around, I uh, usually have to deal with um, the same symptoms and the same problems that you have when uh, people are, they're, they're dying. Uh, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, um, great book on death and dying. It's also what I use when I'm trying to change people's minds or at least finding out where they are in the uh, five-step process so that I can truly help them. So for those who don't know, there's five stages according to Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and then the final one is acceptance. And usually, um, usually I don't try and put this in uh, into any kind of context, but if we look at uh, the first stage, denial, and we think about General Motors, um, this uh, this kind of um, this kind of a phenomenon happens a lot with um, companies that start off in denial. 
Um, one of the statements that I'm paraphrasing now because it was too long to put up the whole thing, but this started years ago with statements like the California EV is nothing more than a fad for Californians. That's kind of like a real denial statement. Anger is the next uh, thing, and, and, I, and again, I paraphrase. Why is this guy getting so much press? GM is a thousand times bigger than them. That's an angry statement. Then if you look at bargaining, um, you go down and you say, if there are no UAW workers, it isn't an American car. And that's paraphrased by from about a dozen different uh, executives and even the president of the United States. And then the next one, vertical integration and no dealerships will never work. I'm not sure whether that's bargaining or bartering or bargaining, I should say, or anger. And then the last one, which I'm sure all the Tesla people will jump all over, um, is um, a statement made by uh, some guy, Mary, you're leading the way in EVs. That's all bargaining kind of statements. Those are the statements that mean somehow, some way, we're going to talk everybody into getting back to the good old days. Then we go to depression. The stock, and by the stock they meant uh, the um, Tesla stock, is rising and so are their profits. Don't they realize that GM has been serving the U.S. for over 100 years? That's kind of like depressing. That's kind of what we heard in the past. But now, Mary Barra's statement is saying actually something that we haven't heard before. Well, Tesla is truly a car company. Tesla is truly leading the way as far as the EV world. And Tesla is truly making a lot of money. Their stock is going up. Everything is going rosy over at Tesla because they made the commitment to move ahead. That's acceptance as far as I'm concerned. And for that, I think that this, that statement, that statement that Mary Barra made, um, apart from the fact that she said that, uh, you know, we won't have profitable cars until 2030, that's the acceptance that means that GM can probably take the first step in moving toward um, the EV world in a, in a sane and, and logical fashion. They have, to, they have to survive. They have to try and figure out how to get ahead. They have to figure out how to create a car that will compete with the rest of the EV world. And quite frankly, um, after just hearing about the uh, BYD uh, purchase, or maybe a BYD purchase of a Ford factory in Germany, and uh, BYD's uh, impact in, uh, in China, and taking, I don't know if you've heard, but uh, BYD took over for Volkswagen as the biggest uh, car manufacturer in China. These big established OEMs really have to take stock. They really have to go through all these five stages. I've found it, it's, it's inevitable that they have to make it. Some are faster than others at different stages, but they all go through them. And the last one is acceptance. And when they hit acceptance, that means that there's a possibility that they'll be able to survive. And I truly hope that all these OEMs will all survive, but until they get to the point of acceptance, it isn't gonna happen. Anyway, a little depressing, but it is Tuesday. Thanks very much for watching, bye.